Hi folks, this is Irene from Brainstorm Makers. And today we have a problem. An overabundance of snow peas. Ah! Actually, that's not much of a problem from where I'm standing. I love snow peas. But our snow peas really have been producing a lot of peas. And the problem with that is we can only eat so many. We've been using them in stir fries and Chinese soups and all kinds of other wonderful things. But we need to freeze some now. Now, freezing vegetables is not difficult. I recommend you get one of the Ball Blue Books These are my favorite books. I've had, I think this is number three. Uh, every once in a while, every four or five years, they put out a new fancy one. It's got new recipes and stuff like that. My original was probably just as good. Uh, it just had fewer recipes. But this will give you all the information you need to be able to freeze or can. In the case of snow peas, we're going to freeze them. And all we need is a pot of boiling water we need to clean our snow peas so they're ready to go. And then we need something to scoop them out of the pot. Now, the reason we're doing this, the process is called blanching. And blanching simply stops the aging of the vegetables in the freezer. If you know that you're going to eat these snow peas in the next month, you could probably just freeze them without doing anything to them, and they'd be fine. But there are enzymes in the vegetables that can cause the vegetables to continue to age even when they're frozen. And all you're doing is you're boiling them super quickly just for a couple of minutes and that kills the enzymes and allows these to be held in the freezer for a year or two. Now, I blanch almost everything that I need to freeze. There are a few things like peppers that you don't need to, and that's where the Ball Blue Book comes in hand. It tells you what you need to, to uh, blanch and what you don't, and how long you need to blanch each thing for. I prefer to have my vegetables as fresh and as crisp as possible, so I do the minimum required in order to make them last for a long time. These are gonna be way cool to have in the freezer this winter when it's like January and we want to stir fry and the vegetables like this in the grocery store look terrible and cost a lot of money. Um, earlier this spring, asparagus was a buck 39 a pound. Now it's up to 350 a pound and it'll be worse later in the summer. Um, it's all a matter of budgeting and for us having vegetables that we know are organic that we've grown ourselves is a big deal. So, how do I prepare the, the snow peas? Let's see if I find one that has all its bits intact. Sometimes when you harvest a snow pea, pieces of it come off, and that's fine. That's what it looks like when it comes right off the vine. Let me put me behind it so that you have some contrast. There we go. You have this little bit here, which is part of the flower and I simply nip that off with my fingernail. And then you have this part, which is where the flower was, and it gets picked off. That is now ready to be frozen. Well, blanched and frozen. That's all you need to do. Nothing fancy. If you have large ones and you want to break them up, fine. I normally just blanch them and let them go because that gives me the option of breaking them up or not later. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> do a quick sort on these and get them all ready to go. Some of these, the base of the flower has already come off, some not. But I like to clean them up because I like that little bit of extra niceness to my veggies. It's, I put all the care into growing them, I might as well put all the care into processing them. 
Now, once in a while, you'll notice that I will actually do what they call stringing. Let me see if I pick a big one and see if it'll do it. No, that didn't do it. Let's see. The next one if I get. I'm picking off that. Ah, there we go. Once in a rare while, I'll get one that has a little bit of a string to it when I go to pull it off. And I will just let that string run. And that makes it a little bit more tender. It just means it was an older bean when I picked it. A pea, rather. <laughs> now I have all of my snow peas cleaned. This will go with the compost. I now need a bowl with cold water in it. Okay, what I have now is I have a bowl with cold water in it. And right before I need it, I'm going to throw a little bit of ice in it. Now, what I'm going to do is I have all these guys ready to go. I'm going to turn off my pot of water so that it's boiling well. I have my timer set for two minutes. That's all I need to blanch this for. And remember, blanching is just boiling it in water. I'm going to take these guys and put them in here so that I can dump them in all at the same time. I have my water boiling. I'm going to dump these guys in. Make sure they're all down in there. And it's starting to boil, so I'm going to start the timer. If you have a lot of vegetables and they're particularly cold, or they have more physical mass to them, I guess you'd say, than these peas do, you may need to wait a couple minutes for the, pea, for the water to come back up to boil, because I want it to actually be boiling temperature. Now while I'm waiting, while my timer's running, I'm going to put this in the compost pile. I have a little container in here, and I'm going to be dumping it out in the, gar in the compost later today. I've got my cold water with my giant ice cube in it. I'll need to refill this later. <laughs> Whoa, that was good. It slipped out of my hand. I want this water to be cold. As soon as this is done cooking, I'm going to scoop them out with this. You don't have to have something like this, but you do have something to scoop it out with. You can use a slotted spoon. You can use some sort of other strainer. Lots of things. It doesn't have to be something fussy. If you're going to just do one batch, you could also use something like a colander that would you, you would use for draining pasta. It doesn't matter. The whole idea is that once it's done cooking, you get it out of there quickly, and you let it drain, and then you get it into cold water. Now, getting into cold water stops the cooking process because you don't want to overcook these guys. OK, there goes my timer. And now I'm going to scoop these guys out, throw them in the cold water. Might as well turn off the batch here, because I'm not actually going to do anything else. I'm draining out as much water as I can, because I don't need to add cold water to my ice water. Oof. And putting them into ice water helps to preserve the color, too. So sometimes if you're going to be using, oh, even in the, in, the, in the popular magazines like Good Housekeeping and stuff like that, they'll talk about sometimes, oh, just blanch this stuff and then dump it in cold water to keep, the, to keep it nice and green. It's the same kind of a concept. We're stopping the cooking. And there we are. Okay. Now, I'm going to let these sit here for a minute. I want them to cool down really well. Once they're cool as much as I want them to be, I'm going to choose how many I want in a package. Now, we happen to have a food saver, vacuum sealer machine, and that's what I'm going to do with most of my stuff in. But I wanted to show folks who don't have one that they can still do it. Now, this is just some I picked up at the grocery store. These are Ziploc, let me find the English, Ziploc freezer quartz. 
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the quantity I want in here, and then I'm going to squeeze out all the air. Now, the reason you squeeze out all the air is you don't want freezer burn. You'll notice I did say these are freezer bags. I use storage bags for storage. The difference between a freezer bag and a storage bag is usually a better seal and thicker plastic. You're trying to keep the oxygen, the air, away from your, your food. When your, air, your food is exposed to air, it's more likely to get freezer burn. It's more likely to get funky flavors. You don't want that. The whole point of preserving your own food is to be able to really enjoy the quality food that you just spent all your time growing in the garden. Now, if you don't have a garden, there were times when we had a small garden, but we had access to food farmer's market sort of things. And there were times when they would have flats of strawberries, big flats of strawberries, which have like six or eight of the containers you'd normally buy in the grocery store. And they were a bit overripe. They couldn't sell them as prime strawberries. So they would sell them cheap just to get them out of their store. We would buy those, take them home, and make jelly with them. So you don't have to have a garden. It just helps a lot if you do. These are nice and cool now. I can feel that they're physically cool. I'm gonna chill this down here a little. I don't wanna reheat my stuff here. And I'm gonna let this drain. Some people will go so far as to actually dry things. I don't normally feel a need to do that. There are things I will dry. Um, this wouldn't be one of them. I would normally be using these in stir fry. So having a tiny bit of moisture in them is not a problem for me. I'm just making space here <laughs> so that I could sit this here without it sitting down in the water again while I talk. Yep, I'm gonna let it drain for a minute or two here and then I'll show you what I'm doing. I can go ahead and show the process here. All I'm gonna do, and I'm, not, I'm being a little fussy here because I'm picky about the way I do my veggies, but say I want to have a nice little batch of veggies here. And that's how many I want to have for my stir fry. Okay, throw a couple more in there because you can't, it's nice to have a bunch. Okay, so if I don't have a vacuum sealer, what I do is I take these guys, I put them down in the bottom of a freezer bag. And I put it down on a counter and I roll it. And what that does is it lets me squish out the extra air that's in here and then hit the sealer. Now, you'll see how little air is in there. That's a good thing. That means these will be not particularly susceptible to freezer burn and that's exactly what I want to have happen. Um, I have seen people dunk them into water to force the air out. And I think that's worthwhile for people who are processing chickens. But for vegetables, this usually works fine. You simply roll them and then seal that strip. And there you are. Then write the information on there so you know what it is and you're golden. Okay, I need to finish processing this stuff today. Hope this inspires you to put up some of your own vegetables or even pick up stuff that is super cheap at the farmer's market or something you like to have on hand that you can't get at certain times of the year. It's four nice dinners or lunches with snow peas for stir fries or soup. We'll see you next time. Bye.